faculty, Dr. Sarata Shogan, our VPs, CDA uh, Chairman Sushant, President elect, uh, I don't know who all are there in this group. So, our technical assistant, CD Chairman of Malabar, Dr. Unni, warm good afternoon to all. As we all know, the COVID 19 grips the world. The whole dentists are really struggling. We are all in an anxiety and fear now. So now we are all acquiring knowledge through webinars and utilizing our time. Idea Kerala State also is doing the same thing in the present scenario. In this present scenario of COVID epi uh, pandemic episodes, we all should be aware, well, and we are doing many webinars in infection control and post-COVID uh, treatment protocols and all. So the dental treatments in the next uh, next uh, is coming to be a little difficult. So and behavioral changes in our practice. So, actually, we are hibernating now with the webinars and all. Malayalathile Pramukumar cinema and Puli Murugan. There is a dialogue in the Puli Padangan and the Uli Kanala, Kudi Kanala. So, we are struggling to achieve something more. Let us have a Good webinar with soft skills. Uh, today's faculty, Dr. Sarata Chogan is well known personality and he will do eh? uh, justice to all. That is surely now. So, with immense pleasure, I would like to inaugurate this program. And uh, I would like to congratulate uh, Dr. Sarat and team and um, the technical team of IDA Malabar and uh, our CD chairman uh, Faisal uh, for all the uh, help. So thank you. Over to Faisal Ji. Good evening to all of you. Over to Dr. Debu for the felicitation. Good afternoon, doctors, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you all for being here for this webinar hosted by the Kerala State. In these uh, difficult times, when everyone's sitting at home, uh, it's a good opportunity for us to refresh our skills. And I'm sure that Dr. Ashokan Sharad is going to give us the skills that are necessary so that when we all go back to our practices, there will be a lot of people whom we need to uh, address a lot of issues because of these peculiar circumstances. And I'm sure that this program here will help us and arm us with all the necessary um, information and the techniques to keep our patients and uh, all of them happy. Once again, thanking you all for being here on this day and wishing everyone a happy learning. Thank you. Uh, over to Faisal for the introduction of the faculty. President Dr. Dr. Pisi, Secretary Dr. Deepu, Faculty Dr. Sharath, dear esteemed members of IDA Kerala State, a warm good evening to all of you. I welcome all of you for the first webinar of IDA Kerala State. The topic for the day is WhatsApp Doc soft skills in clinical practice. And uh, we have a very well-known faculty to present this lecture. Dr. Sharath, he has graduated from Annamala University and he did his MDS from the Meenakshi Amal Dental College. After finishing MDS, he did his PhD from Meenakshi Amal University, Chennai. He is the recipient of Young Dentist Award from the Governor of Tamil Nadu in 2012. He was also recipient of Young Dentist Research Award 
by the Indian Society of Pediatrics and Preventive Dentistry in the year 2008. And he also got the Health Excellence Award in 2009 from IBAM. He has uh, about 70 publications in reputed journals and is the assistant editor of a PubMed index journal that is Indian Society of Periodontics and Preventive Dentistry. At present, he is working as a professor and head of the Department of Pediatric Dentistry, KSR Dental College, Tirichangod, Tamil Nadu, and is also a director of Academy of Dental Excellence, which is a neat coaching center at Tamil Nadu. I welcome Dr. Sharad for this lecture. Over to Dr. Sharad. A very good evening to uh, all the members of IDA Kerala State. Thank you for this uh, wonderful opportunity during this COVID lockdown. Uh, so I thought I should keep you guys as the first slide uh, in the introduction of my uh, lecture. Uh, I didn't know much about webinars 10 days ago, and I'm sure most of you didn't know. And now all of us locked on uh, at home, we're learning a lot of skills. And one such thing which I think we should really think about is the soft skills. And that is going to be the topic for discussion today. But when I said, uh, when uh, Dr. Faisal called me uh, and said that you, we would like to have you uh, give a lecture for the IDA Kerala state, the first thing we generally think about Kerala. Yeah. Generally, Kerala is God's own country. And uh, I come to Sabarimala for the last 23 years and my God still lives there in Kerala. So it is definitely God's own country for me. Uh, all the districts in Kerala, uh, apart from Tamil Nadu, I think the only state where I think I've gone to all the districts is only Kerala. Uh, it's probably for a lecture, for an exam. Kannur is obviously one of the close ones to my heart. And obviously this place, I was born in Kollam. So, uh, my mother always uh, keeps talking about Kerala and a uh, uh, lot of things we discuss about Kerala and my hometown would still be uh, Kadapakara there at Kollam. So, thank you Kerala State IDA for giving me an opportunity uh, to start this webinar series and it's an honor for me to be amongst you here this evening. Again, the first uh, stalwarts thinking about Kerala, the first few people I would have known in my life would have been Amuti and Mohalan at some point of time in my life. Uh, I'm a periodontist, so I'm going to tell you a lot of stories here today. So don't expect me to give you a lot of technical points and stuff like that, but it's going to be useful for your practice, that I can assure you. So as a periodontist, I'm going to give you lots and lots of stories. And I start with this particular thing. So this is about the first people whom I used to think was Mohanlal and Mamuti, now it's go to Nibin Pali and Dulkar Salman and Bahad Fasil. But what makes everybody look at Kerala are not these superstars right now, but it's Kerala, the leader in COVID management. Uh, it's not a political statement, but I'm sure everybody across the country okay, and across the globe are looking at Kerala for the wonderful work it has done towards this COVID lockdown, and how you're managing this particular situation. Uh, so kudos to the chief minister and uh, the Health Minister Sailaja and her team for doing a wonderful job. I would like to uh, stress one point here. I would like to talk about something called control and loss of control at this point of time. I would like you guys to remember there's something called control and loss of control, which will come about in my lecture. And I think Kerala state has full control at this situation right now. And United States of America is supposed to be boasting to be the biggest powerful nation is out of control or at loss of control at this point of time. But let us forget about Trump at this point of time because we are talking about Kerala and one person who is very dear to me, Kerala State, Faisal sir, thank you so much for inviting me uh, to this uh, presentation and giving me an opportunity. Every year I come to Kannu either for a guest lecture or for some exam or something. He was my first teacher in periodontics when I did my uh, UG in Annam University. Thank you, sir. You've been such an inspiration and you've always given me an opportunity every time you got the opportunity to give me one. Thank you, sir. So these are the VIPs for me from Kerala as of now. And as I told you, I'm going to start with some stories. So I told you I'm a periodontist. So this is a little poem from English 8th standard syllabus. 
written by an american columnist or uh, a poet who is in uh, a comedy poet i should say he is a columnist who writes in newspapers the title of this presentation aptly suits our situation right now in lockdown this is going to hurt us just a little bit yes it is hurting us all a little bit whether it's career or whether it's money making we are all locked down it's hurting us a little bit but he didn't title this for us for the covid lockdown situation actually he titled this about dentistry the poem is about dentistry and he taught children some tortures are physical some are mental but the one that is both is dental and mind you it was in the english cbsc poem syllabus in our eighth standard children in india as well so as periodontists we are used to treating these kind of children who learn something about dentistry so i am going to come and give you some tips here in for your private practice so let us look at this whether it's dentistry whether it's any medical profession people who walk in like this always come out want to come out of their hospital or the dental clinic completely happy completely cured completely healthy so what is the key to holistic health people are looking at holistic health they only want to go in like a weak person when they come out say they want to be totally happy and for that we need to think about something called people skills people skills are also called interpersonal skills or soft skills most of our cde talks or our conferences and conventions give stress or focus on technical skills there are not many forums we don't have it in our syllabus to talk about people skills so we don't deal much about people skills in our particular uh, curriculum as of now the dental council doesn't teach us about people skills the soft skills but mind you look at the second picture at the bottom the soft skills and people skills are more important than your hard skills uh, doing our rct doing a, a filling would only come into the technical skills or the hard skills the soft skills or the people skills is very very important when you do customer service business and mind you dentistry is our business we do a business called dentistry and we have to create a win win situation for this we have to keep our patients happy we must keep our pockets full and at the same time everybody should be in a happy situation so the topic for today is whatsapp doc this is my favorite cartoon character bugs bunny so i always keep this as one of my slides so i decided to keep this title as whatsapp doc and the title for my presentation is going to be predominantly on the soft skills in clinical practice okay look at this i google search something on dentist for you and i found this wonderful interesting picture okay all my friends think that i'm minting money right i'm taking bath in money and this enjoying my mom my parents think that i'm a doctor taking care of all the patients doing justice okay there are some guys outside think oh you are a dentist so sometimes we write doctor in in our uh, in our uh, flight tickets or train tickets and sometimes we say oh you are not real doctor you are just a dentist that sometimes what the society thinks that are and my patients think that i am picking the money out of their pocket so i am just lifting money every time i look at a patient they think that i am stealing some money out of them i think i am doing an executive job of business sometimes i do those lousy composite respirations and i feel like that but right now i don't even feel like doing a composite respiration in this covid situation i really feel like this i am just like i don't know i have to do anything all the clinics are locked down i am really what i am really doing right now is sitting like that with, with all the dental clinics and dental colleges closed at this point of time so look at the brain of a dentist i am going to pull some names here and there some of my friends in periodontics from kerala i think this brain i would talk about dr korath abraham from kochin i think if dr korath is here some of the friends of korath should know that he is always behind his lab he does his laboratory work as well so i think his brain is probably going to be the predominant portion of his brain is going to be interaction with the dental lab all the time maybe about conferences maybe about buying material maybe about paying the debts so this covid lockdown we don't have practice we have some debts to pay and we have very very le le little leisure time we have very little time for family right and this is how our brain usually works or sometimes you know that you you see a patient the patient has a very clean mouth when he walked into the dental practice but actually he has a lot of cavities you know that this patient has brushed just one hour or just before they came into the dental office but they did not brush for 365 days right so instead of brushing on all other days they make sure that they brush 
on the day of the dental visit and they come to your dental office. So you think, your brain thinks, okay, this patient is just made sure that they brushed before they walked inside. And this is sometimes common in a pedo practice, right? We don't want a pedo, a pedo patient coming in up on a dental practice because we know that dental practitioners really want to stick on time, time is money. And uh, when you are looking at practice, you can't afford to have a pedo patient crying, coming and crying and spoiling away one hour of your time. So, and or sometimes you don't want a nagging patient. You tell your receptionist, please give appointment to that particular patient. You fix the crown when I have gone to the conference or convention. You tell the assistant doctor, I don't want this patient when I am here. So you better give this appointment at this point of time. So most of our time, our brain works like this. We talk about lab, conferences, materials. We think about why the patient has brushed. We think about why not to give appointment to this particular patient. And this is how unfortunately how our brain works. But now let us look at from the patient's perspective. This is an amazing survey which was done and they found the top 10 reasons why people hate dentists. Why do we, why do general population hate dentists? What are the reasons why they hate dentists? Obviously the first reason is going to be needle, then it's going to be pain, then it's going to be anxiety, drill, the invasiveness. So I'm going to mind you, I'm going to talk something about invasiveness here. The sounds, the smell, the cost, the lectures. What are lectures? We, I don't, some people might be thinking, I don't work in a college. I'm not a lecturer. I don't give lectures in my practice. But yes, we do. I'm going to talk about that too. The poor service which some dentists provide and the bad memory. Some of us might have had bad memories in dentistry in our young age and we didn't want to go to the dentist because of such bad memory. So these are the 10 top reasons why people hate us. And I think we have to work on making sure that we can reduce these 10 points so that they feel a little comfortable with us. Coming to lectures, look at this. I had a wonderful article. Uh, two studies were done in the world in 15 years difference. First study was done in around 84 and the second study was done in 1999. And both the studies, mind you, told that all doctors, 73 percentage, okay? 73 percentage of doctors stopped the opening statement of the patient in 23 seconds. That means you only give 23 seconds for the patient to tell his chief complaint. Okay, the mean time given for a patient to tell about his chief complaint is only 23 seconds, right? So patient, as soon as you, the patient starts talking, we put a mouth mirror inside and we start examination and the patient feels like this. I would love to answer your questions, doctor. Unfortunately, your hand is inside my mouth. So I'm not able to answer your question. So we don't wait for more than 23 seconds. Most of us at least don't wait. And there is a beautiful another slide. Dentist is a person who numbs the mouth, stuffs with cotton and starts the conversation, right? We just dump something inside. We ask them, how was your holiday? Next time, as soon as uh, patients start coming into our practice, so we would put the mouth mirror inside, we would place the drill inside somebody's mouth and we would ask, what did you do in lock COVID lockdown, okay? And the patient is going to say, blah, 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 right? And this is something which we should really avoid because when you ask the question, make sure that you give them some time to answer that question, have some patience, and that is something very important in your practice. Okay. This is one of my favorite interesting topics which I generally talk about. Study of distances is called proximic. Okay. So when you are at a two feet distance from somebody, maybe your wife, your spouse, your children, you are at an intimate distance. When you stand at two to four feet distance, it's called the personal distance. Four to 12 feet is called social distance. And while I'm sitting miles and miles away from you, I'm sitting at a public distance from you. When you go to a mobile shop or when you go to a grocery store, you're going to buy a milk packet. How far do you stay from the shopkeeper? You don't go at an intimate distance. You don't stand face to face like that. And you don't ask him, I need a milk packet right? Dentistry invades into personal space. Okay. I come from a small town called Virudhinagar in Tamil Nadu. And when the endodontist started his first practice here, uh, there was one lady who went to him and this guy was taught about ergonomics in his dentistry school. So he had to recline the dental chair behind and he had informed the, uh, uh, the lady that I'm going to recline your dental chair. But this lady find, found it a little inconvenient uh, she was finding it uh, that she had to literally lie down on that doctor's lap 
okay so she came around telling people uh, whenever she goes for this musing sangam and all these things the tamil sangam kind of thing which we have here she was telling i went to the dentist guy and i had to literally lie down on his lap okay so this is the inconvenience which we cause to people because we intervene into the personal space or the intimate space the intimate space is like your spouse's space okay and mind you every time you put somebody's you put your hand into somebody's mouth we always stay very very close and that is something which patients find very alarming sometimes and you have to be very careful about that okay fear of pain okay so fear of fear and pain are something which always keeps a person away from dentist there are two words which i want you to understand okay it's more for pedo people but it's always present in general practice as well sometimes you find a 40 year old man or a 40 year old woman she wouldn't want to come and sit on the dental chair she would say can i hold this assistant's hand can i can you do it very slowly doctor i am very scared of this particular thing okay so there are two words there is a word called bmp which is not biomechanical preparation bmp means behavior management problems so people who show uh, move their hands legs show facial expressions these are people who have behavior management problems children who come and roll on the floor children who come and throw temper tantrums in a practice have behavior management problems sometimes you find a 10 year old child who has a central incisor but the five one is just hanging around there okay you don't even need an la you just have to do that okay just do that and it will go but this guy would roll on the floor and try to not get onto the dental chair and this is called a behavior management problem okay so all people showing behavior management problems okay need not need not necessarily have dental fear and anxiety okay but all people with dental fear and anxiety if i am scared about dentistry if i have a phobia towards needles then i might express behavior management problems that means dental fear and anxiety might express more of behavior dental management problems but people who express behavior management problems need not need not necessarily have dental fear and anxiety okay let us look at what are the reasons for dental fear okay fear of unknown if i were to take you into a very dark room somewhere totally isolated we we know that uh, quarantine was supposed to be a very harsh word before this covid lockdown if somebody said i would come and quarantine you okay we would have thought what would they do in quarantine it would have been uh, something uh, unknown thing for us anything unknown is something very scary so anybody who walks into a dental office does not know what a root canal treatment is they have pain they think that you will come and save them but they are still scared how are you going to relieve them of pain so fear of unknown is the major reason for the dental fear the second thing is fear of pain as a dental practitioner you might say i use single tooth anesthesia i use wand i use lasers in my practice whether you use laser single tooth anesthesia wand cartridge okay any local anesthetic system still there is some amount of pain associated with dentistry and if you call yourself a painless dentist you are going to be a liar so don't tell anybody that it's going to be painless you can reduce pain to some amount of some amount of extent but the point is pain is a very subjective phenomenon so not everybody can withstand the pain in the same way the threshold for one person is entirely different from the threshold of another person the fear of pain is the second reason for dental fear okay lack of trust the picture which you see at the bottom is called a trust game you are supposed to stand on a plank which is about 3 to 4 feet and people your friends or your family is supposed to stand behind like that holding the hands stretched out and without looking back you are supposed to fall automatically behind right without any support you are just supposed to fall down only if you have a sense of trust with all the people below you can you will be able to fall down like that it's called the trust game and when people walk into your dental office they don't trust you somebody told them that this dentist took care of me well okay or and or they have come to you before for once and then you did something it worked well for them then they come there sometimes many of us sometimes many many of uh, the pursued patients still consider us as the family doctor so they wait for us that's building up the sense of trust so once a patient has trust in you then the patient would come to you once you become their family dentist then it's done the trust is developed so sense of trust is something important the next two i was talking about a sense of control in kerala state 
and what trump couldn't do in usa loss of control loss of control is something very very common in politicians common in people with high power and authority right policemen administrative officers ias officers ministers chief ministers all these guys always have a sense of control they think that they have power to do anything unfortunately dentistry is one place where they have to come and keep their mouth open but they can't talk we are the masters at that point of time so they feel that they don't have the control and power over the situation and this is called a loss of control mind you it is not only in children children when they come to the dental office they are very pampered at home they know how to get things done so if you ask mummy mummy says no you go and ask daddy if daddy says no then you go and ask your uncle or aunt or a grandma grandparents and you'll get things done this child who walks into the dental office suddenly thinks okay you are a dental practitioner and you know that you can remove that root stem rs and the mother tries to help you the child is shocked the child looks at the mother and say you came with me you are supposed to be on my side why are you joining with this dentist the stranger and trying to pull out my tooth and this is a loss of control situation and mind you it is not only in children lot of adults have this loss of control because they are very very powerful guys and these powerful guys can't wait so you have to give them prompt appointments when they come in they they want to do a lot of things quickly and they want a sense of control unfortunately dentistry does not give a control to them we are the masters who have the control okay so loss of control is something which you have to look in in your practice this is my favorite i'm sure all of you irrespective of age right from 22 23 years to 50 years anybody who is practicing dentistry i'm sure when you are in your dental school some of your engineering friends would come and ask you how do you put your hand into somebody's mouth okay how do you deal with saliva and how do you guys uh, deal with this thing and we just say we just give one injection and most of the time we wouldn't even remember the composition of la in our college and that's the only injection we give most of the time till date right and mind you an injection into the eye an injection into the ear injection into the nose and the injection into a oral cavity feels exactly the same okay so many patients who walk in okay when they are first time walking in especially with their children or people they think when they are when they were not educated okay they think an injection is given in the hand okay and sometimes we have to say it's just near the tooth and they shock it was it is a personal body cavity i ear nose and the oral cavity or body cavities a prick into the eye a prick into the ear and the oral cavity means the same so this is called as fear of intrusion i would like to quickly remind you that we spoke about invasiveness that is also intrusion into personal space when we stand too close to that person when we stand at an intimate distance and you prick into somebody's mouth you have to be very very careful they have all the rights to be scared of you they have the right to fear they have the right right to have pain fear they have the right to have fear of unknown they have the right to have fear of loss of control and they have the fear of intrusion so dentistry yes it's a very painful thing the other thing which is very very common is people browse on the net most of the time okay internet is a double edged sword i started saying that i didn't know much about webinars i didn't know what instagram was i didn't know what uh, twitter was i didn't know zoom and go to webinars but i am organizing a series of webinars in my ad academy as well so i am on uh, i am on zoom with you guys today i am sure most of you have learned zoom and webinars at this point of time yes internet is a double edged sword it is helpful sometimes it is not helpful sometimes it is up to how you use it okay so you feel so angry so upset i should say uh, taking all the rights with kerala state idea we feel so egoistic sometimes when the patient walks in and says uh, i think i need a root canal treatment i think i need a filling okay so we always think why is this guy deciding the treatment plan who is he i did dentistry for 5 years i did post graduation for 3 years why is this guy coming and dictating terms because he read it on the internet he read irreversible pulpitis pulpitis mind you we are the ones who write about our information in the internet right we talk about pulpitis we talk about root canal and that is why they are going to browse on those particular things right we have our own websites for our clinic if you are going to buy a mobile phone okay we would just uh, see snap deal first then go to flipkart then look for amazon then look at which one gives the best offer 
sometimes we would go to a store and just buy, take the phone, lift it in our hands and see how it feels. Leave it there, come back to the online and buy it on Flipkart, which gave you the best deal. So mind you, internet, yes, people have the right to browse in internet. Don't say they can't browse on the internet. They always come in for the second opinion. They could go to multiple dentists like this and walk into your clinic. Don't feel angry about it. It's their right. Okay. Imagine that you bought a new car. Okay. I have a, I have a friend of mine who said, Modi got this car for me. I was shocked. I asked him, sir, this is an Audi. Don't tell me Modi got this for you. He said, yes, Modi got this for me in November. And I said, sir, November. It was exactly the time when he did all this money changing stuff. So the thousand rupee notes and 500 rupee notes were not working. The demonetization came in and he didn't know what to do. So he bought a second hand Audi car. It's a true story, right? So most of the time people buy a stuff, right? And likewise, people think that you bought a new car. The patient thinks, ah, doctor bought this car in my mind. We do a renovation. People think, the patients think, yeah, doctor bought this in his mind. It is true. Dentistry is our business. We make money with patients. It is not wrong. It is right for them to think that you, they bought the new clinic. You bought the new dental chair. Yes, we do business. We buy it and it's not wrong. So they, it's, it's the right for them to think that you, you bought it with their money. Yes, we are buying it with their money and it's still okay. I'm going to show you this lovely article. It is from February 1997. So this article is 23 years old. This is an award-winning journalist, William Asenbaga. He had a dental problem just before he had to travel to another state in the US and he could not get an appointment with his regular dentist, his own family dentist. He could not meet that guy. So he had to go and get an opinion from another dentist. He wasn't convinced with what this dentist said, but he had to move quickly because he had some work for journalism. So he tried with another dentist and that dentist gave entirely a different opinion. So then he went on to another dentist and these were four important, interesting things which I found in that article. Your dental work is lousy. One guy said that your dental work is not even good. The other guy said your dentist knows his stuff. He knows everything what he knows. Then this guy got confused. So he went to a few more people. Then he said, one guy said, there are two options. This guy really got confused. If it's fever, there's one option for treatment. If it's any other body pain, there's one option of treatment. There may be different drugs. But why are there two options of treatment? So he thought that these guys are just fooling around with something. So he decided to do a survey in the entire United States of America. So he went to all the 50 states in the United States of America. And he got an entire list like this. So for one tooth of dental pain, he had an opinion of 11 crowns by one dentist. One guy said yeah. 21 crowns. No problem. Hello, sir. Continue. continue. No problem. Thank you. Thank you for the support. Thank you. Okay. Uh, uh, then there were a couple of guys who said 28 crowns. You can see Memphis and Salt Lake City. He had only 32 teeth. And almost except the third molars, all the 28 teeth had to be replaced with crowns. And the budget, maximum budget, which was given was, mind you, 30,000 US dollars in 1997. It is published in Reader's Digest as how dentists rips us off. And finally, you know what he did? He came back to his own dentist, the family dentist. He paid $50, took an x-ray and did a very small elective, small procedure. And his pain was relieved. So what happens is, this is what happens. Sometimes I've heard some of my friends in North Kerala and South Kerala say, in North Kerala it's different, South Kerala is different. Yes, it is true. Chennai is different. Bangalore is different. Mumbai is different. Tamil Nadu is different. Viridhanagar is different, right? But it depends on what you want to set your fees as. So I would suggest that people can browse. People can make diagnosis. They can take multiple opinions. Don't feel angry about it. Focus on your quality. Most of IDA works towards common guidelines these days. They give you a set of, they give you a list of what to charge patients. So that's good that we have some common guidelines depending on the place. But our principal focus should be on quality. We should not be bothered about what the patient is thinking. Imagine from a psychologist's point of view, we always think about the other person, what is going on in his head. 
and that is exactly why we feel offended that is why we feel egoistic about us we should stop looking at that person's perspective we should accept that there is another perspective to it okay so i would suggest the next most important thing we should learn is empathy there are two important words in psychology here one is empathy the other one is sympathy and there is another word called pity pity and sympathy don't mean the same okay pity is saying power okay that person is power that is pity sympathy means you are sharing that person's pain that means the pain is divided into two halves and you are sharing that person's pain sympathy and pity don't work in dentistry we need something called empathy putting yourself in another person's perspective and think if you are going to buy a mobile if you are going to buy a shoe would you browse would you ask people if you are going to buy a shuttle racket would you ask for different opinions yeah so that is what patients are doing and that is how we should establish our communication okay we are all practitioners okay or we are working in a dental college i think this is something very very important that we must understand because empathy not only to your patients but empathy to your team that is very very important because a lot of people slog in from morning to evening with you are you going to be a leader or a boss i would suggest that all of you be team leaders because the leader in the first picture on top he leads from front they work towards a common goal and they share the success of the goal but when you are a boss it's like these it company guys complaining sitting that the boss sits over my head expects me to do work pushes me from behind we pull the load and the credit always goes to something above right whether you are in a dental college or in your private practice i think you need to acknowledge and empathize with all your faculty your receptionist your uh, technical staff your assistant doctors your assistants nurses everybody and that's very important to be a good leader so what is the basic difference between a boss and a leader the boss gives orders the leader gives direction the leader gives advice and not answers the leader admits mistakes he listens first he gives credit to you and he's like a coach okay the boss is always take it first they take the credit right it, that's how it happens okay so i think we should all learn to be leaders here and not bosses in our own private practice or in the dental college with we work and coming to that empathy and being a team leader empathy being a team leader always follow something called as gratitude and gratitude is something we should be very thankful whether it's a patient who pays the money whether it's the technician who helps us whether it's the sweeper who sweeps with us okay i'm sure most of us i wash uh, utensils now i'm cleaning toilets i uh, remove the filter of the ac right i'm wiping all the dust in my home right i wouldn't have done that before i'm sure all of you this lockdown has taught us one word and that is gratitude and when we get back to our practice i think we should remember one word one take home message is gratitude gratitude towards your patients empathizing with your patients gratitude towards your practitioners your your fellow people whether in college or something but when you have gratitude i think there are four important things focus on people not performance be very specific in your gratitude don't say good job say good job for coming early and making sure things are happening be complete in your sentence so the last part of my presentation the main part of my presentation which would last only about 15 to 20 minutes i think there was slight network issues at the faculty side we will try to reconnect in a few minutes right so sir thank you for this opportunity radha i would say kerala state thank you for this opportunity sir we lost the last few minutes of your presentation there were some network issues we couldn't hear did we log out yeah no sharat uh, the slide from the beginning can you talk the gratitude slide okay okay i was talking about boss and leaders 
and i think there we got a little disconnection because of some internet issues and i told you about boss and leader i think the most important thing we need to understand here is empathy empathy in your practice and you need to be good leaders so when we talk about empathy and being a good leader it always ends up with gratitude i was telling you gratitude is one most important thing which we have learnt in this lockdown i was telling you that i am cleaning toilets i am removing ac filters i am wiping fans of the dust right with the dust i am washing utensils and these things i wouldn't have even bothered to do these are simple gratitude simple things which you can do for your family at this point of time i know we have time and then we are doing this but when you go back to practice please remember the sweepers the technicians the assistants everybody out there in your dental practice as well as in your college have a sense of gratitude and how to practice this gratitude is it okay fine sir are we are yeah. we fine yeah continue yeah, okay. continue and when i said about gratitude the most important thing about gratitude is focus on people think about people most of the time okay yeah uh, we have to focus on people not on performance and we should be specific in our gratitude don't just tell uh, thank you it was a good job it was awesome don't say that it is a very blunt statement to say be specific be specific tell them that i appreciate that you could come early so that we could finish this job together right complete the statement make them feel that you acknowledge the entire effort taken by them customize your thanksgiving right don't say don't buy 10 cards of thank you the same way and send it to everybody on their birthday and say thank you for being a part of this team right customize something just even write it on a small pin up board and tell some of your faculty that you did a good job because of this particular thing it makes them feel more happy making another person feel more happy is the best way of empathizing with them and don't fake it because most of the time communication which i'm going to talk in the next few slides that's going to be the major part of my uh, presentation which will last only about 15 to 20 minutes but don't fake your gratitude because people can actually understand that you're faking that gratitude okay so we are going to the last part of my presentation okay that is communication this answers most of the questions which i have raised during my presentation the first thing i want you to remember is conversation or any communication is predominantly non verbal okay mind you if i had just sit in one place so i am sitting in a webinar i am staying away from you if i didn't raise my voice here and there if i didn't give my stress okay if i didn't move my hands and gestures if i didn't try to establish a web uh, an eye contact through this webcam the information which i give is not going to get passed on communication has one sender one receiver and there is a medium like this internet and the language which i use the english is actually sending the message okay so conversation is only 35 percentage or communication is only 35 percentage is verbal when i say verbal it is what you say how you say and when you say it. it's very very important okay i had uh, when i started my practice about uh, uh, 15 years ago in virudhunagar Uh, i still remember pedo practice exclusive pedo practice in a small town always found uh, something very interesting so i just told this guy get up and spit okay so he got up and he turned to his right and spit there so i had to quickly move my legs away because my spit tone was on the left the communication which i gave is get up and spit right and i found this particular thing very interesting yesterday because i was trying for more stories and i found this and i said rinse and spit i meant in the sink how does the patient know right so the patient didn't know the person who has not walked into the dental office does not know this i'm sure some of you have read uh, uh, a joke on prescription by a doctor the doctor says take this as medicine right so and the person eats that paper as uh, as a as a prescription and come back after 3 days and says doctor i didn't i'm still not relieved of my symptoms right communication has to be clear it is how you say what you say and when you tell them okay that's the right time to convey certain things but communication predominantly is non verbal the facial expressions the tone the movement the eye appearance the eye contact the posture plays a big role in non verbal communication so look at this particular thing which i have circled the closeness invading into someone's space i told you about invasiveness 
proxemics when we sit into an intimate distance and look at that posture the slouching posture okay so imagine i give you a posture like this imagine that you guys are talking from there and i give that posture like this okay that backward slant okay the upward backward slant with crossed hands okay just like that it's like saying okay you tell me whatever you want to tell okay i will see i will just listen to it i will take it whatever i want to take right so an open posture a forward lean is something which shows you that you are interest you are you are interested in listening okay so these are non verbal communication a patient knows you you are asking a patient a question and then you are getting things ready because you know that you only have 20 minutes with this patient you have very little time with this patient so you ask a question but you are not listening to the answer you are doing something else right if you are a periodontist i am sure you will be in soup because a child will ask you doctor tell me what i told you and then we will be in trouble but fortunately general practice okay most of our patients don't ask us they try to repeat the same thing again and again right so the ways of talking look at this the ways of talking the pauses where we use the laugh sometimes we have to give a chat with them we have to talk about something we can't we can't uh, think about 23 seconds of opening statement right i told you we only have 23 seconds to listen to the opening chief complaint if we have that i'm sure none of the non verbal communication could be picked up the most important thing you should learn sitting at home will be the transactional analysis which i'm going to show in the next slide and picking up non verbal cues if your wife did that to you okay that's a non verbal communication if they did that to you it's non verbal communication right so they don't have to, your spouse does not have to give you a word of answer looking at their facial expression you are able to understand what mood they are in right so that's the best thing i want you to learn non verbal cues given by the patient that is very very important and you have to learn that okay so there is something called hearing and listening which i want you to differentiate you asked a question to this patient okay i asked a child what are you uh, deal what are you seeing in tv right now and he says chota bhim then i boast myself saying oh i know chukki i know dolakpur and i know laddu and stuff like that and he starts one full episode of a uh, story and i don't have the time to listen to it okay and then he'll say uncle what did i tell you tell me what happened now and then i am in soup i told you active listening listening means giving a voluntary effort okay this guy is talking from virudhunagar on a webinar series and probably 100 people are sitting and listening to it some of you might be hearing hearing is accidental falling if some of you are sleeping there it's a bad okay okay i am sorry that i had to shout into your earphones but if you had turned and looked at the slide that means it was hearing hearing was reflexive hearing was involuntary okay but listening is intentional you just think okay i am i am sitting on a lockdown period there are so many webinars but i am in kerala ida but i came in here without interest but let me let me give it a shot let me try and listen maybe this guy would give me something and that focus that intentional voluntary effort you do is listening and communication predominantly is active listening you have to actively listen to your patient so 23 seconds of opening statement is something which we have to learn with okay the last 15 minutes i think i'm going on time is it okay yeah yeah 15 minutes or 10 minutes i should say it's going to be on transactional analysis okay this is something interesting maybe uh, people who knew about soft skills this might be something as a take home for you there are three ego states okay there are three ego states in all of us one is a child ego state when we go to a banquet okay in a conference okay when you sing in your bathroom when you dance at home when nobody else is there around okay when you put your tiktok videos okay you are expressing right when you cry when you smile when you are expressing it is your child ego state okay sometimes your friend is in some trouble right your friend is in some trouble and then you give them a piece of advice okay and you become like a motherly figure okay and you would say these are things we should do and these are things you shouldn't do okay so these things come from your parent ego state if one of your friend is feeling extremely low you would just give an advice like a grandmother and that comes from your parent ego state the adult ego state is the problem rational problem solving mind okay if there is a problem 
we don't sit and cry we sit and cry sometimes that's your child ego state you think how should i deal with it so how am i going to deal with this whole issue so you sit and focus on the problem and find a solution that's your adult ego state okay here i think i have to uh, ask some of you i think you can type on your chat box i'm going to ask you i'm going to put you into a situation where you were in your dental college i'm going to take you back in time imagine that you were in your final bds okay all of you out there whichever batch you were there okay so i would like to see the chat box getting with some answers now so imagine that you were in your final year bds and whatever subject you didn't like of okay think about that particular subject you suddenly realized at 9 o'clock or 10 o'clock in the night that there is a test tomorrow and it's very very important for you to pass this final year bds okay and what happened is you start feeling like crying you 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 feel like crying you you feel very upset and if you crying that is your child ego state okay so but then your mother crosses that side and she's shocked she's never seen this happen before in last 4 years she's never seen you sit with a book and she sees a son or a daughter who's very upset with a book open with tears in the eyes what would your mother do okay that answer which you are going to type now is your parent ego state can i see some answers please can i have some uh, chats instead of some thumbs ups uh, it would be like an activity can i see some people typing something can i see this is it possible yeah on the q and a section okay somebody said she sits with me and waits for me fantastic your mother would come and sit with you and say what happened why are you sitting like this uh, uh, she might say okay i would uh, sit with you for some time yes that's a good answer anything else there are about 140 people seeing this only one person has answered anybody uh, could go back to their bds days and type something for me yeah type in q and a increase the morale okay don't type it in the q and a i think you should type it in yeah if you can type it in that thing yeah any other sure. answer sure sure yes, we sir. have some, we have some answers from some uh, people my mom okay. will sit there and give me company till i finish okay sir other one says console me and remind me of my previous marks and reinforce okay. my confidence okay okay so i can see that sir she would comfort and motivate me okay okay i'll tell you what else she will do she might give you a cup of coffee okay she might say you can go and sleep now i would come and wake you up in the morning and that would be easier for you to read okay she might comfort you she might console you she might give you a reassurance that you did well fantastic okay so now i'm going to ask the next question apart from saying this what else would your mother do there are another things which your mother would do if you had a daughter who is sitting there okay okay amma always says don't get tensed you just read and write the exam yes perfect apart from all this what else could your mother say okay i have the answer same person dima abdul kader full marks to you okay you are the first to answer the first question and this answer as well she says why did you not study beforehand itself why wait till the last minute okay and kavita kumar says should have prepared from the beginning fantastic right all mothers would come forward and tell why are you not doing this why didn't you do it from the beginning right you should have answered you should have started your preparation before look at this a parent is somebody who always who always gives you right things in life and wrong things in life okay as a parent you also when you want to advise your friend you would become like a grandmother and take care of them if you want to advise somebody then you might want to be a little critical about them they will say okay manage by your own they could have they could say anything like that that is your parent ego state thank you for that uh, wonderful answers so let us look at this ego state so we understand when we cry and laugh it's a child ego state when we give free advices and when we take care of people it's a parent ego state when you are solving the problem by yourself it's the adult ego state okay so mind you all the 150 people out here we have three ego states so every time you are going to go back home and talk to your spouses imagine there are going to be six ego states in front of you three in your head and three in the other person's head who is going to talk to who develops a conversation okay okay so what is a complimentary transaction a complimentary transaction or a reciprocal transaction 
is between a parent to parent or a child to child okay when you are drunk when you are in a banquet you express yourself your dance by like a child to child when two parents talk about what is happening in the lockdown situation how are you managing your children you talk like parents to each other okay if i ask faisal sir how are you doing and faisal sir says i am good sharad how are you doing then it it would be like this how are you i am good it's like an adult to adult a stimulus and a response it's a complete transaction which is called a complementary transaction or a reciprocal transaction this is very good look at this situation which i told you already a 40 year old man who walks into your dental office we thought why is this guy so fussy right why is he acting like as if he's so scared why can't he just sit there and allow me to do the treatment the dentist says take your seat on the dental chair the patient says i don't want to i'm very scared a 40 year old woman would say this the dentist says there is nothing to worry and the patient says can i hold your assistant's hand can you do it a little slowly i am very afraid of pain i am very afraid of dentists okay this person is expressing his fear okay i told you they have the right to fear they have the right to browse something they learned from the internet that you are going to give them an la they are scared of needles they are behaving like a child in front of you they want you to take care of them like a parent the con the transaction would be complete only when you behave like a parent okay look at this i told you that there is a nurturing parent a grandmother in you who is going to take care of the children or take care of your friends is the nurturing parent the other person who says why didn't you start early when should you have started why did you leave it to the last end till the end those is a controlling parent okay so we have the adult and all these children so what is a cross transaction when i go and ask somebody if i ask kavita how are you kavita and kavita sir why do you care sir okay and gives me an expression like that then it would be a cross transaction a cross transaction would be not a reciprocal good transaction so this sometimes happens at home most of the time okay you sit down for lunch and ask your wife okay ask your husband can you just give me salt can you just get me water from the refrigerator and your wife would go immediately saying you should have realized that you need water okay get up and take it okay so if she says that okay that means you just asked her can you pass the salt okay if people understand english well can you pass the salt the answer should have been yes or no then it would have been a complementary transaction or a reciprocal transaction but what's the answer you should have realized that you wanted the salt before you sat down you should have got it ready before you actually got in to do this okay that's the conversation which happens at home so this is something which i want you to practice at home every time you talk to your spouse think in what ego state is the other person responding so you can be careful about that look at this a patient comes to you and you explain to him what an rct is you want to show that you have done 5 years of vds and 3 years of mds and you know what the parts of the tooth are what root canal system is about what root canal treatment is about and you give a one good lecture you have that colgate models you have the parts of the tooth you explain everything the patient asks you only one thing he didn't listen to any explanation you gave he just gently asks you okay can you just pull that tooth outside doctor right you are giving a rational problem solving answer but the parent like the, the the patient is talking to you like a parent already made the decision talking to the child so this is again a cross transaction you have to be very careful about this so look at this if a patient walks into your dental clinic and says i need a filling i browsed on the net i know that this needs a filling and you better do a gic filling for me okay so you get very angry when you know gi when you hear gic filling or when you think light cure composite resin i heard it from one of my friend the doctors have one blue light and that could be white color filling i don't want the silver fillings okay so they did their ground work they come and tell you i need a white filling i think it's called a light cure filling you don't want to hear this because you did your vds and you say i am the dentist here okay so you look at the patient and you say the tooth needs a root canal treatment and not a filling you become angry you become so egoistic you fail to understand the patient is talking to you from a parent ego state and you reply back in a parent to a child ego state the patient also talks to you from a parent to child you also talk like a parent to a child this is because both the parties are making the judgments and the decisions for the other the patient comes and tells you do this for me 
and you tell them i can't do this for you this is a cross transaction so what should you do okay i need a filling on my lower tooth that's what the patient says and you should say i wish i could do a filling on your tooth but i'm afraid it's much much deeper than that and stop there stop there please don't show your expertise over the subject don't show off all the materials you have don't give them multiple options okay don't tell them i have this option that option this option for crown which is this much the lab charge is so much don't give them anything just tell them i wish i could do a filling but it's much deeper ask the patient to move from the parent ego state and come down to an adult ego state and ask okay it's deeper okay and what should i do doctor if it's deeper what should i do hook the person's ego state pull him from the parent ego state pull him down to the adult ego state let the patient ask you what can i do for this doctor okay and then probably you could answer okay tell him that there is some procedure called root canal treatment and stop there again let him ask you what root canal is about then when you finish you tell him that any root canal needs a crown so go step by step i know you are looking at time is money and you might want to finish off patients quickly but sometimes you feel so angry about the patient only because you fail to pick up which ego state he is in okay so this is an article from the medical journal okay so this is about a medical uh, heart patient about a heart patient who comes with a cardiac problem with severe heart pain and angina or something he comes like a child he wants he, this is between a patient and who has a cardiac problem and a doctor or a nurse okay even a nurse has to sometime act like a parent and take care of the child or behave like this adult and take care of that particular child but i am sure most of the dentists okay whether you are a periodontist or a general dentist we always have this child ego state okay i'll tell you why if you have a 5 year old child coming into your dental office you try to ask this child who bought this bindi for you this dress is very pretty what's your favorite color which school are you studying right but if a 40 year old man comes inside your dental practice i don't think any of you ask who is your best friend who bought this shirt for you who is your best friend how many idlis did you have this morning i am sure none of you ask that because you know when to move into the child ego state you know when you talk to a child you change your voice you modulate your voice you do non verbal communication without being aware of this so you you talk like a 5 year old when you look at a 5 year old so we as dentists we know that we have three ego states and from now on i wish that you would focus on which ego state the patient is and based on that you would move ahead with those things so i'm coming to the last two slides uh, the take home message is accept that patients can have fears i told you there are five good reasons scientific proof i didn't talk about any literature here because it's only for dental practitioners and so there are five major reasons for dental fears and every patient has the right to have his fear okay and so he has the right to browse he has to has the right to have multiple opinions because we browse we take multiple opinions the patient also has the right to do that never hear hearing is reflexive listening is voluntary so i want you to be intentional active listening is a major part of communication and i told you in communication pick up those non verbal cues the non verbal communication is the predominant one empathize and never sympathize don't try to share the person's thing and divide the the thing it's always empathizing putting yourself in other another person's shoes when i say another person's shoes it includes your patient it includes your receptionist it includes your assistants everybody don't forget gratitude when the covid is done remember the three ego states talk to a 5 year old like a 5 year old okay so when you go and look at customer service jobs these are the 10 things i collected these kind of 10 things in different colored pictures and we have spoken about communication listening a positive attitude being very firm and decisive being a good leader taking responsibility empathy don't fake yourself don't fake in gratitude depersonalization conflict resolution whenever there's a conflict in the department or whenever there's a conflict in your clinic i think as a good leader you have to sit with the team and do that and that's about interpersonal skills i told you if we could develop all these skills of doing well okay and he certainly knows how to make his customer feel because we have i know in kerala 
every 10 meters you know you have a dental clinic sometimes okay so everybody wants to make a win win situation so we must know how to make our customer feel uh, happy and show obviously from tamil nadu i can't miss out rajinikanth and i've shot mamuti and mohanlal so i just thought we'll finish with uh, rajinikanth here and i said i was a i am a pediatric dentist so i would most of the time talk to my patients like this with my mask uh, hanging around my chin but uh, i think when we go back to practice it might be like this maybe that child would have become old enough like this we never know when we start practice or maybe our pr protection needs gears have to become like this but mind you this is also going to be there this is like that lady gaga's uh, uh, dress costumes right trust me the dentists are also scared so we might have to protect all of them around this i want to finish with one small story just a one minute story because i like stories this devil okay the devil decided to retire okay so he thought he will sell all his tools okay so he neatly arranged all the tools in a very decorative manner and he named the tools each tool like hatred jealousy anger envy all those kinds of things he just put all the tools and he put a label to it and he was saying i'm going to give a discount sale on because i'm going out of job i'm leaving my business i don't want to be a devil anymore okay but there was one tool which was very very old very much used okay and one of the customers who was surprised asked the uh, the devil why did you put it on top very far away from the other tools why is it so much being used the devil just said that's a very expensive tool that's the tool which i use most of the time it's very expensive because that is one thing which i can use when all other tools fail okay and that tool is very very expensive and i am not going to uh, sell it right now and this guy became very curious because this guy knows transactional analysis so dentist the devil didn't give too much of information the customer became more and more curious so he wanted to ask what is that tool and the devil said that tool is called discouragement and depression okay so i'm sure most of us in this lockdown period we feel a little anxious about our practice i know we do a lot of things at home but discouragement and depression is something which we must throw away we must find something positive in anything you do and i think the most important soft skill that this particular lockdown should teach us because the devil will win only when there is a sense of discouragement and depression and i'm sure we are not going to give that uh, to the devil and thank you so much for giving me an opportunity kerala state ida i don't know i know i shooted uh, time by 1 hour 15 minutes uh, but i i think i would have uh, shared some of my experience on soft skills thank you sir over to faisal sir thank you dr sharath uh, for your excellent lecture and it is always a pleasure listening to you always enjoy your lectures yeah thank you uh, sir i'll check whether sharath, i need sharath it is yes, a sir. wonderful presentation thank you sir thank you sharath uh, so many take home tips are there thank you sharath yes sir thank you thank yeah. you so much yeah, thank I, you for I, the opportunity I, yeah i'll check whether there are any questions yes sir there's a question which i can see it's yes sir you can go ahead yeah oh, wait a minute Uh, that uh, of course you already answered. I think that is is it possible to change the parent-child conversation to adult adult conversation? Yeah, yeah. You should you should always don't give so much of answers. You should never never give so much of information. Don't show your anger on the patient, even if you are irritated. Right? I don't say you have to feel like Buddha. Close your eyes and feel very uh, happy about it. Don't show your anger or displeasure on the face. Right? So just just make sure that. uh you don't uh, comply with uh, whatever his whims and fancies are right you need to make sure that you give limited information and don't give him overboard information because he is not going to listen a person who has already made up his mind and going to talk to you like a child and he is going to take the parent role the only way is give him minimal information and come make him come down to the adult ego state so talking there wouldn't really work non verbal communication a smile on the face a gentle gesture A, 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 a wink on the eye would probably bring him back to the adult ego state. There is one uh, interesting question. Great person. Uh, how to deal with the patients who bargain? 
Okay, sir. Okay, sir. I told you because uh, uh, as a periodontist, I know I have some friends in North Kerala and then I have some friends in South Kerala. They tell North Kerala charges differently and South Kerala charges differently. I tell all of them, that's how it is. I can't charge what is charged in Mumbai and Bangalore. Don't worry about it. Don't see. I always tell them this is not uh, a vegetable market. Okay. And I tell them sometimes in a very smiling way. Just see, don't give them so much of explanation. Don't be very angry on them. Okay. Okay. I'll ask you this question. When you go to Flipkart and when you look at uh, your Amazon, whichever gives you the better deal, we always take that. Right. The patient wants to know if I can yes. get a deal. It's up to you to give the deal or not the deal. Right. So I have seen one of in Erode uh, where I went to for practice. I saw one uh, dental practitioner. He reduced uh, orthodontic charges from twenty thousand to fifteen thousand rupees. Okay, five thousand rupees just reduced. This is eight years back. He reduced five thousand rupees in that twenty minutes. I did that pulpectomy. I saw him talking to a patient. He said twenty thousand rupees because it was a known patient. But he reduced to fifteen thousand rupees and said I will only charge the orthodontist charges and I will give it free. I told him, don't do that because if the patient knows that five thousand is your profit, okay, that means you are the loser. I told him that this patient is not going to come to you because you just reduced five thousand rupees. So don't reduce it. Just tell them that you you can you can first say that this is how the charges are going to be because these are the things and stop there. You can try telling them sometimes in a very smiling manner that you don't go and uh, go to uh, uh, when they come for a, in an injection. Or they go for a lab test in a medical hospital. I'm sure they don't ask for a discount, right? So you can tell them those kind of situations for them to understand, right? Everybody wants to pick up something. Even when you go to a vegetable market, I'm sure ten rupees tomato you want to buy it for eight rupees. So it's still all right for them to ask, but it's not necessary for you to reduce the price. If you reduce the price, that you are the loser, right? There's one more question. How do you plan uh, or approach a pediatric patient with all the PPEs. Okay, how do I plan? Yeah. Okay, the okay. only thing I learned from uh, the, the only thing I learned from uh, whatever I could get from Dr. Gopi Krishna's uh, stuff and lot of things which are happening. Only thing I could understand is not to go into practice till June. So that's going to be very difficult for us. Uh, I'm 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 hoping that things would uh, make it uh, a little easier. But I, I personally would answer that. I know it's from Kavita, so she want, probably wants me to answer something different. So that's for you, Kavita. Uh, I think we should wear uh, different kinds of scrubs because I listened to Gopi Krishna's uh, suggestion. Uh, he was telling that a uh, lot of things which are put up in the, across the world, and this thing might not be feasible for us. Okay. So if you have a practice where you can shift to a scrub, see, I have a Superman scrub. I have cartoon scrubs which I wear. In my pri, in, in I used to wear these kinds of scrub in Chennai, and I don't use it anymore. I think I will wear those scrubs. He said all practitioners must have a bucket and soap, or buy a washing machine in a private practice, right? So I would look as attractive as possible for them for the child. I will definitely wear a COVID-95 mask with some colored pictures on it, if possible, a sticker on it, right? And then I will have an OHP sheet, okay? Which is only three rupees, not the shield because the shield is going to be very expensive. An OHP sheet with a girl's band, right? Like the band which I'm wearing right now. We have these girls' bands. I'm sure you can pick one from your daughters and put it on the OHP sheet and wear it like a, a shield on top of it. Okay. So you must have your N95 colored. You might, you can have a different kind of pink bands for the girls with this thing. So I know it's going to be difficult for pediatric dentists to be. Uh, going like a, a, a like a, a Halloween kind of thing, and we have to make it as interesting and presentable for the child as possible. Any other question? Yeah, transactional analysis. You can read a book called "I Am Okay, You Are Okay." There's a book called "I Am Okay, You Are Okay," but most of these books on transactional analysis and most of psychology, whatever I talk, okay. So these things are all related to medicine, or they're related to uh, psychological depression and some kind of thing. So I steal those concepts and I convert it into dentistry. So I don't think there is any book on transactional analysis in dentistry as such, but there is a recent article on this. Okay, so I will get. I I don't remember the article because it's just published because we were trying to talk about this in forums recently, and I found that I will pass that to Faisal sir. 
I can pass on these books. I am okay. You are okay. I have e copies of those kinds of books as well. Oh, there's one okay. question here. Can you read it, sir, or should I? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, sir. Some of them are not ready to give medical history properly. Then how can we get information regarding this COVID-19 from patient if some family members are quarantined or affected? I, I tell you, Kerala, you're doing a wonderful job. Okay, I think the first state which is going to get out of COVID is going to be you guys. Okay, and predominantly, I think the answer which I've taken from uh, why I would like to quote Gopi Krishna Singh is I've heard a lot of people speak about COVID, but this guy again, uh, he was my senior again. Faisal sir should know him. Was much junior to Faisal sir there, but he's telling practical ways to get it done. So he's telling the best way, even if the lockdown is open on May third. The best thing he's telling is, don't practice till June. Okay, and you have to start in June. There's no choice for us, right? Once you start in June, I'm thinking that most of the things will settle down by uh, early this thing, right? So asking them about fever, even if they tell you I had fever, okay, what would you do? The patient says I had fever and throat ache, right? Even I have had throat ache and fever, or we've, all of us would have experienced some amount of throat inflammation throat inflammation or anything in the last uh, one month, right? So we cannot be probably COVID thing. We have to tell them that it's going to be dangerous for you. I think the threat you place on the patient will be most important. I know it's sometimes uh, not a good uh, thing to tell, but I think understanding the psychology of people, you can tell them I am protected well, but you could be a danger if you don't tell me the truth. And that's the only way to get the truth out of patients. If you have a PPE and a COVID mask and a shield, I think we will definitely be provided uh, pr protected if we don't have much of aerosols. But if the patient had COVID, he's going to be more dangerous, right? So you will have to tell him. But some of them, uh, I just spoke to my brother who is the director in uh, Michigan State, USA yesterday. He was telling USA, we were very, very scared one month before. We didn't know how to do it. By May 1st, we will be definitely back to work in a normal way because we have learned it much faster than the other countries. Okay. I don't know. He's so confident because when I spoke to him two weeks back, he said, it's very, very dangerous. Don't get out. Okay. But yesterday he's, he said, he said that they found out the way and people will understand that it's very important to tell the history. But again, he said the same thing in USA. They will tell the history properly in India. We are not sure. The only way is to put them in trouble saying that you are going to be more dangerous than us. And maybe that's the only way we can get the answer. Can I add a few points? Uh, sure, yes, sir. Sir. yes, sir. Yes, sir. Go ahead, sir. Feel free, sir. Yeah. Because, yes, sir. Feel free. Yeah. My request to all the people who are going back to practice is uh, that the IDA has provided a risk assessment form. Um, ensure that all your patients fill in the form so that at least we have some document that says that the patient has not withheld any information from us. Uh, when, when you're treating the patients, and ensure that you educate them, like sir was saying before, educate them regarding the need for treatment. And only if there's an absolute need for a procedure, uh, start the procedure. Because as of now, the government is also saying that don't do any procedures unnecessarily. Even today, uh, there was a question posed to the Health Minister of Kerala. And uh, she's answered saying that uh, don't do any unnecessary procedures. And she's given instructions to patients only to come for emergencies to clinics. So the the basic thing that we should follow is uh, ensure your safety, thus ensuring the safety of the community. Thank you. And that's a very, very important point. So we have to make sure we are safe first. We have to follow yes. the guidelines because we would be the one who would be in trouble. Sir. Yes, our safety first. Then yes. our duty comes. Okay, thank you, Dr. Sharath, for your excellent yes, lecture. Yes, really sir. enjoyed it. And I thank all the participants of this lecture. More than 150 were there attending this lecture. I thank each and every one of you. Next week, we are going to have a practice management session with Dr. Rapif. The time and the other things, I will put it in the group by tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you, one and all, for attending this lecture.